Hello lovely yoga people and welcome to this week's video. So this week we are working with opening and expanding the hips. So the whole of the next 11 weeks is about expansiveness in the body, creating space to allow prana to come in. And today specifically we're working with opening the hips. So I'm going to, but first of all, but first of all, we're going to um, start by um, tuning into this central channel. So we've got the Shashumna um, Nadi or channel, which is where prana is. We're, we're trying to guide prana to come through this. So we're going to start just with a little visualization. And first of all, I'd like you to just close your eyes and tune into the heart space. That just means the place in the center of the chest there. And in this place, I'm going to invite you to imagine a little candle flame burning bright in the center of your chest. So if you're not good at visualizing, you can just know that it's there whether or not you can see it in your mind. And then I'm going to invite you to imagine that every time you breathe in, this candle flame just gets a little bit bigger. Beautiful. And then we're going to imagine a golden light starting at the center of this candle flame and moving up through the chest, through the neck, through the head, out through the crown chakra and shooting up to the sun star. So we can see that as a star. We can see this candle flame in the center of our chest as a star as well. So this is connecting us up to the sun. Taking a moment just being with that. So then I'm going to invite you to imagine coming from this star in the centre of the chest, a deep red thread that's moving down through the body, through the pelvis, out through the root chakra, down into the earth and shooting right down to the very centre of the earth, where the earth star sits. So we can just imagine this light, this energy moving up to the sun star, then all the way down through the, the star in the centre of the chest and down, deep, deep down into the earth star in the centre of the earth. Beautiful. So we're going to work with that as we are moving and working with the breath as well as we inhale breathing in imagining prana moving in to the body and as we exhale you can engage the mula bandha that we've been working with the muscles of the pelvic floor beautiful so I'm going to invite you now to come and lie down on your back into semi-supine with your knees bent and your heels behind the bottom. So we're lying here, sun ray fingers really spread wide, heels behind the bottom, just gently being here for a moment, feeling your body on the ground. And then on your next exhale, I'm going to invite you just to drop the lower spine down to the ground, allowing the tailbone to slightly curl up. Inhale, coming back to the natural space, place. And then just doing that once or twice more in your own time. Beautiful. And then we're going to bring the soles of the feet together, drop the knees out to the side. I'm going to invite you to bring your hands and put them onto your sort of low chest, so the place just above the solar plexus here, just having the hands resting gently on the lungs there. And we're going to try and just let go of the knees. 
and just feel how this opens up the hips. If this is uncomfortable you can always put cushions or blocks underneath the legs to give you support. We're just going to breathe here for a couple of breaths, not needing to do much at all. Tuning into the breath, tuning into that star in the centre of the chest and the cords or threads moving up and down through the body. Wonderful. So then we're going to just invite the knees to come back up to the top. And then we're going to bring the arms out to shoulder height along the ground. And we're just going to drop the knees down to one side and take the gaze over in the other direction. A couple of breaths here, being with whatever's happening for you. Then inhaling and going back over the other side. Then we're going to come back up to the top and we're going to raise one leg, doesn't matter which one you do really, cross that leg all the way over the other one as if you're sitting in a chair and drop the legs over. So this is quite a lot stronger. So only do this if it works for you. If it's too much on the hips, then you can always do what we were doing a minute ago. And you can put the hand onto the outside edge of that top knee if that works for you. Just to add a little bit more to that twist. Breathing here, looking over the opposite arm and then coming back through and swapping over. So taking the other knee over, dropping that knee down to wherever it will go. And again, if you want to, bringing that hand up onto that leg and breathing here. And then coming back round down into your semi-supine position. So from here we're going to raise the legs up, <clears throat> bringing the hands onto the knees and we're going to take big circles going out in opposite directions <clears throat> and coming all the way back round. So doing it two or three times one way <clears throat> And then coming back to the starting position and going all the way back round the other way. So just working with what's right for you. And then we're going to grab hold of one leg with the, interlacing the fingers with one hand and take the other leg long along the ground. So I'm pushing through the heel of that leg. And I'm just going to wiggle backwards and forwards for a moment, or side to side rather, for a moment with this knee. And then I'm going to drop the other hand and put it onto my hip and bring this leg out as wide as it will go, still keeping hold of it with my hand. And then from here, I'm just going to let the leg go drop down and then so I'm moving it up towards me and then away from me but this is so I'm just it this is just mobilizing that hip a little bit making sure that the other side of the pelvis is rooted to the ground pushing through the low leg the heel even still lovely and then I'm going to bring both knees back up into the chest have a little rock from side to side for a moment before I swap knees, so taking this leg long down along the mat, pushing through the heel, having a little bit of a wiggle with both hands this side, before I then drop this hand down onto my hip, bring, really bringing this other leg out and then from here taking it away from me and then towards me again, mobilising this hip a little bit. 
Wonderful. So then from here, I'm going to just have another little rock around on the back, dropping the feet back down to semi-supine. And then from here, I'm going to bring my right foot up and I'm going to place my ankle over the raised knee to form a sort of four shape here and then bringing my hand onto the top knee there and pushing that knee away, opening the hip a little bit. So it might be that this feels quite strong for you in this hip and if that's the case, then what you can do is you can just bring the hands back down to the ground and see if you can just raise the bottom foot a little bit and see how this opens the hip a little bit here. So if that feels like it's enough for you, this is also good because it's working the abs here. If that feels like it's enough for you, stay here or you can take the hands and thread the needle. So you're taking this hand through the needle around the back of the bottom knee. See, I've lifted my head now, but I'm going to put my head back down on the ground. So this is a much stronger opening for the raised um, hip, the hip of the raised leg. I mean, they're both raised, but the one that's up on the other one. And I'm going to try and just relax in here, breathing, seeing if I can let my tail bone drop to the ground as well as my head. I can even feel this in the arms and the shoulders. It's a really good stretch for all different parts of the body, really just letting everything go. And then I'm going to let go, take that foot down and raise the other foot and push away on that knee. Now just being really mindful all the time of any areas of the body that might feel uncomfortable. So I've got a little bit of a dodgy knee so I have to really watch out when I'm doing things like this. So hands coming down to the ground, raising the bottom leg, feeling how that works the abs as well and either staying here or threading the needle on the other side, dropping the tailbone, dropping the head. I can even use my elbow to push this hip, this knee outwards a little bit as well, which can add to that stretch. But it, you may just do what works well for you. It may not work to do that for you. Wonderful. Beautiful. So we're going to bring both knees into the chest now, have a little rock from side to side, and we're going to go into a happy baby. So the important thing about happy baby is that what you're trying to do is to have the leg, the knees bent, but also having the soles of the feet to the, to the ceiling. So it's not so important that you bring the knees down towards the armpit. The most important thing is that you've got the soles of the feet facing the ceiling. So if you're like this, that's not happy baby, that's something else. So if you're like this and you're feeling like you, it's hard for you to get your feet up, just straighten the legs a little bit so that you can get the feet facing the ceiling. Bring the hands to the back of the knees and then just gently see if you can pull the knees towards you. If you end up going like that again, just back off a bit. So this might be enough for you. You might be able to come a bit further forward, maybe rock a little bit to get yourself comfortable. If, however, that feels like it's not much of a stretch and you feel able to bring your hands up onto the soles of your feet, that's an another thing altogether. Some people can do this. And what I'm trying to do in this position is keeping my um, tailbone imagining anyway that it's moving down to the ground, keeping the back of my head on the ground, my chin slightly down. And here I'm just kind of being, I might have a little bit of a rock around, but it's such a beautiful opening of the whole body. This pose is really nice to rock around and it's also nice to find a space of, a place of stillness. So just work with whatever works for you, breathing here. 
perhaps keeping in mind those threads, even working with the Mula Banda on the exhale here. And then gently coming back down into your semi-supine. So from here, we're going to roll over and come into all fours. So I always like to pad my knees with a block. Do do that if, <clears throat> if it's right for you. So coming into all four position, we're going to do some cat and cow, sun ray, really spread fingers and just looking down between the thumbs for a moment and then we're going to inhale look forward taking the spine to the floor exhale looking between the knees taking the spine to the ceiling so two or three times Really see if you can focus in on those threads. Focus in on the Mula Banda as you exhale. And really being with the breath. Lovely, so we're going to come back to a neutral spine. And then we're just going to do some movements with the legs. So we're going to keep the knee bent and take some great big circles coming backwards. Just seeing how far you can mobilise that hip joint. And then going back the other way. I've done it three times that way, so I'll do it three times the other way and then swapping over to do the other leg. And then back the other way three times. And then from here, we're gonna take the knees nice and wide, like almost mat distance, Take the big toes together and drop down, so dropping the heels, if this works for you. If it doesn't work for you, you can roll over onto your back and just do a similar thing on your back. But if this is good for you, just dropping everything down, getting things out of the way, dropping the chest down. If, the forehead, if you need to have something under the forehead, you can have hands or a block or something. Really dropping down and see here if you can come out with some big loud sighs out. Ah, feeling how that's really opening the hips. If you're not feeling it in your hips, you can open them up, open your knees a bit wider. Really see if you can get a beautiful stretch into the tops of the legs and the hip joints. Wonderful. So I'm sitting up on my ball and my block, so I'm in a nice comfortable seat where I'm going to be comfortable for a little while. Now I'm just going to talk you through the Nadi Shadana breathing, um, but I'm not going to actually do the breathing with you today, I'm just going to talk you through it and then you can pause the video and do it for a bit and then start the video again and, and, and then, you know, finish it. Um, this is because I'm going to be doing this breathing in the class, but I, I haven't really got time to actually do it with you here. So, we're going to start by um, just imagining, so you're not using any hands, just imagining yourself that when you breathe in, you breathe in through the left nostril, out through the right, breathing in through the right and out through the left. So that's one cycle. So you can continue just doing it in your mind like that. It's just as powerful. Or you can use a mudra. So some people have, um, they just use, what do they use? They just use ring finger and thumb 
together and thumb and little finger together and they close the right nostril to start breathing in through the left and then close the left, breathe out through the right, etc. I prefer to do this like um, church and steeple thing here and having my um, index fingers either side of my nose and doing it that way. So if you want to do that, pause the video for a moment, do the breathing for however long you want to do it and then come back and continue the video. Wonderful, so hopefully you enjoyed your breathing and we're just going to take a moment here in the toe squat. So I like to have my knees bent. I've got my toes tucked. If this is too much, you can always come up to high kneeling and then just take some weight back into the toes until you get a little bit more used to it. But it's really good. I try and do it regularly to keep my toes fit and healthy. And then from here, we're going to come and do some lunges. So we're going to come up to high kneeling and we're going to step, I'm, I'm starting with my left foot, so stepping the foot through and taking a really nice generous step forward so that then when I put my hands onto the front leg and lunge forward, my knee is not coming in front of my ankle. It's a really good alignment there. And this is really opening for the front of that hip. So we're just going to breathe here for a few breaths. As you inhale, you can just come out of it a little bit. As you exhale, dropping down gently, really opening the front of the back hip here. Beautiful. We're just gonna come down gently into the dragon here. So this can just enhance it a little bit. It's just taking a little bit of weight over the front leg there. And then we're going to come up, we're going to rise up, bring the arms up, coming into sort of warrior one arms above. And from here again, dropping down. Lovely. And then this time, when we come down, Mula Banda, exhaling, we're going to bring both hands in front. No, sorry, yeah, inside of this foot. So I've got my hands inside of that foot. So it might be that being up on your fingertips from here feels really strong. And if that's the case, just stay there or even have a block or something if it's really strong on the hip. Or it may be that you can come down onto palms, bend the elbows a bit and even bendy wendy people, which some people are, can come down on to elbows that's too much for me I can't really do that so I tend to just bend my elbows taking the back foot back and just spending a bit of time here this is really opening you can always come onto the outside edge of the front foot and this can really open the hip as well and allow a little bit more movement Wonderful. And then from here, we can just gently move back just for a little bit of her hamstring stretch, moving the body back and then rolling on that heel to open the hamstring. Wonderful. So from here, we're going to come through to the pigeon and I tend to like to bring the knee back, come into all fours and then bring that knee forward to in between the hands. Now I can't bring this foot out because of my knee, so I have to really watch out, taking the block away. And I'm just going to walk my, my body back with that back foot. And I'm going to start coming up onto the fingertips, raising up into proud pigeon here. And then we can drop down, so making sure that the hips stay level here so you're not dropping down to one side and we're going to come down just come to wherever you feel comfortable so coming onto the elbows might be enough that might feel like a really big stretch or you might want to have a block under your head or perhaps you can bring your head down onto your hands or onto the earth and breathing here 
So just seeing if you can really let go a little bit more here, allowing the back of that front hip to release. Trying to feel the expansiveness inside the body. Opening to allow the prana to come in. Lovely. So then we're going to turn around and do it on the other side. So again, starting with the <coughs> toe squat. Don't have to take too much time here, but it's just nice to really allow the toes to take a bit of weight, to do a bit of work. We're going to stand up and stepping the right foot through, or whichever one you're doing, hands onto that front leg and really just seeing if you can drop down, releasing, feel the expandedness in that back hip, lovely, coming down into the dragon, see how this just takes a little bit more weight, what this does is this actually does a bit more to opening the back of the front hip there, then from here, raising up, coming into warrior one arms here, and then exhaling, and the Mula Bandha here, and these hands come inside the front leg. You can roll onto the outside edge of this front foot if you want to, to really allow a bit more expansive, expansiveness in that front hip there. And again, just doing what's right. On this side, you see, I feel like I've got a bit more movement to come down here. We're so different. So just doing what's right for you. It may be that you're just bending the elbows a little bit, or it may be that you're up here and that still feels um, intense. So just doing what's right. Then we're going to come back through, move back into the half splits, rolling on that heel, opening the hamstring a little bit before we bring that foot back and then bring the knee through for the pigeon. So on this knee, I can, I've got a little bit more movement here. I can bring that foot through a little bit. Finding your right place here, we're going to move up into proud pigeon, really opening the chest here. Feel how this compresses the back, the lumbar spine and the back, the low back a little bit. So the back of the pelvis there, it opens the chest, working what works well for you. And then we're going to come forward either onto elbows or if you want hands or a block or if you can do the ground. Make sure the hips are going straight down so you're not falling to one side or the other. And we could do some big sighs out here. <sighs> Wonderful. So from here, we're going to come and do some counter poses. So we're going to come down into stick pose to start with. So this is um, coming down onto the earth, pointing through both toe, both feet. So really pointing the toes, bringing the arms up above the head and stretching through the fingers. And then from here, we can bring both the knees up, take hold of the knees, bring the head up and curl up into a little ball. So doing that once more, stretching along the floor, stick pose, and then exhaling, bringing the knees up. Lovely. So then we're gonna come back into semi-supine with the arms coming out to the sides, dropping the knees down to one side, looking over the other arm. 
going the other way. Beautiful. And then we can just take a couple of bridge poses. So hands down by the sides, feet behind the bottom. Exhale, dropping the lower spine down to the ground. Inhale, curling up the tailbone, coming up into the bridge. If you want to bring the arms up to join, you can do. You can either stay here or you can come down and maybe take that little curling into a ball again. You can do that once more if you like, coming up into the bridge. Maybe take a breath or two here. And then we're going to drop down and find our Shavasana. So arms out to the sides, palms with the, with the um, facing upwards. Ha feet out about mat width apart, chin slightly down. And let go of everything. Close the eyes or lower the gaze. Just allow yourself to be and spend a bit of time here. Don't move from here just because I do. I hope you've enjoyed this lovely slow hip opening practice and it's great to revisit these videos. So don't just do it once, come back and work with it again if you want to. So I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, if you want to support me some more, you can subscribe to my channel. You can give me a comment, which is really useful. And if you want to donate to me, you can contact me through, through the email, which is at the end of the video. So thank you so very much. Namaste.